Welcome to Mayo Medical Laboratory's Hot Topics. These presentations provide short discussion of current topics and may be helpful to you in your practice. Today our topic is Ebola virus. Our speaker for this program is Dr. Ellie Thiel, Director of the Infectious Disease Serology Laboratory at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Dr. Thiel, thank you for presenting with us today. Thank you for the introduction and to the viewers for joining us today. For this hot topic, I will briefly review some background on Ebola virus, the current outbreak, and clinical aspects of infection. Before we begin, I should note that I have nothing to disclose. During this presentation, I will provide an overview of Ebola virus and discuss how it is transmitted. I will also review the epidemiology of the virus and provide a status update on the ongoing outbreak in West Africa. I'll then discuss the clinical manifestations of disease, diagnosis, treatment, and finally prevention. Ebola virus is a single-stranded RNA virus and is actually a subspecies of the overarching Ebola virus genus. Ebola viruses, along with Marburg virus, are the two members of the Filoviridae family of viruses, all of which are associated with causing severe hemorrhagic fever in humans. Within the Ebola virus genus are five subspecies, including Ebola virus, the causative agent of the current outbreak, Sudan virus, Thai forest virus, Bundabugo virus, and Reston virus, which primarily causes disease in non-human primates. Ebola virus was first identified in 1976 following two independent outbreaks of hemorrhagic fever in what is now the Democratic Republic of Congo and Southern Sudan. It is thought that the index patient was traveling along the Ebola River in the Democratic Republic of Congo when the exposure and infection occurred. Since the late 1970s, outbreaks of Ebola virus have been largely sporadic and have all been restricted to the African continent. Regarding transmission of Ebola virus, the natural environmental reservoir for the virus is unconfirmed, though scientists do believe that Ebola virus is a zoonotic agent and is maintained in the animal host, most likely in fruit bats. The means by which Ebola virus is transmitted from the animal host to humans, however, remains unclear. Human-to-human -human transmission occurs by two primary routes, either direct or close contact with body fluids from an infected individual, or through bloodborne means, for example, through direct inoculation with a contaminated needle. It is perhaps equally important to understand by what routes the virus is not spread. Ebola virus is not considered a respiratory virus and is therefore not spread through airborne routes, and individuals are not infected through ingestion of the virus from either water or food. As many of you are aware, the current Ebola virus outbreak in West Africa has affected four countries, including Guinea, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and most recently Nigeria. As of August 11th, there have been over 1,700 suspected or confirmed cases of Ebola hemorrhagic fever and 961 deaths attributed to the virus. Notably, this is the largest documented Ebola virus outbreak in Africa and the first one reported in West Africa. Importantly, there has not been transmission of the virus in the United States, and due to heightened public awareness in our sophisticated healthcare system, the risk of this occurring remains low. Following infection, the incubation period for Ebola virus can range from 2 to 21 days, though the average is from 8 to 10 days prior to onset of symptoms. Ebola virus and members of the Filoviridae family of viruses cause hemorrhagic fever in humans, and patients typically present with sudden onset, nonspecific symptoms, including fever, malaise, myalgia, nausea and vomiting, and headache. The majority of individuals will subsequently develop hemorrhagic symptoms and multi-organ dysfunction. While some individuals are able to recover, most unfortunately are not. The reasons behind this are not entirely understood, though it is assumed that patients who recover are able to develop a strong immune response to the virus earlier on as compared to those who succumb to infection. In general, depending on the species and strain, the fatality rate of Ebola viruses can range from 40 to 90 percent. The fatality rate for the current outbreak has ranged from 50 to 60 percent of infected individuals. With regards to the diagnosis of an Ebola virus infection, it is critical that providers contact their local state health laboratories and or the CDC for guidance on specimen collection, handling, and transport. 
We ask that clients do not submit clinical specimens from patients who are being evaluated for Ebola virus infection to Mayo Medical Laboratories for any testing. Mayo Medical Laboratories does not offer any assays for detection of Ebola virus, and in an effort to minimize any potential exposure to laboratory personnel, we ask that clients please refer to the CDC website indicated below for the most up-to-date information regarding specimen collection and testing. Unfortunately, there is no directed antiviral treatment against Ebola virus infection. It is important, however, to exclude other potential causes of severe disease, which are endemic to West Africa, including malaria. In general, treatment is largely supportive, including maintaining electrolyte and fluid balance, oxygen levels, and blood pressure. With regards to prevention, there is no currently available vaccine. However, the risk of an outbreak in the United States remains low, and this can be kept at a low level if individuals continue to adhere to the recently released CDC travel restrictions to areas affected by the ongoing outbreak in West Africa. In summary, as many of us are aware, the Ebola virus outbreak remains ongoing in West Africa, and human-to-human -human transmission occurs through direct contact with body fluids from infected individuals. Symptoms of infection are largely nonspecific early on, and many patients often develop severe hemorrhagic disease, which has a high fatality rate. Regarding diagnosis of Ebola virus infection, it is important to contact your state health laboratories and the CDC for the most up-to-date recommendations and to refrain from sending samples from suspected cases of Ebola virus to Mayo Medical Laboratories. Finally, care of patients with Ebola virus is largely supportive, though new treatments are being evaluated during the current outbreak with promising results.